Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. We are adding content to CheapControls.com so you can download some extra documents used in this video. In this video I'm going to go over how to export a page and then import it back in so that you can duplicate different elements quickly. I'm also going to incorporate this into an emergency stop switch that will be on multiple pages. I've created a new file. I'm going to add two fonts to it because I want the text on the e-stop button to be larger. You can select multiple fonts and then open it and they'll both be in there. You can see they're both in here. I've got a smaller font and a larger font. They're both Arial. I'm going to use uh, ID1 for my e-switch button. Now on the initial page I'm going to add two buttons so that I can go to different pages. I'm going to add a text so that I can put up the color that's currently being displayed on the button. I'm going to do a dual state button for the e-switch itself and a timer. I'm going to change the font on this to 1 so it'll be larger. And on the timer I'm going to slow down the interval to 1 second. 1,000 milliseconds. So you'll be able to see the change. In the dual action buttons you have two states and the value is 0 when it's considered not pressed and 1 when it's considered pressed. And the background color when it's currently when it's not pressed is gray and when it's pressed is green. I'm going to leave those defaulted for right now even though we're going to adjust them later. And I'm going to do that just to show you some timing things and how the page loads. The text box up here, we're going to have it just do a text of the color that's, that this button is. Most of the code is going to happen on the timer. I'm just going to paste the code in for now. And what the timer is going to do is it's going to look at button number 1 and see if it's greater than or equal to 1. I have a little note there so I explain it. I could have it just be equal equal to 1 because the value is either going to be 1 or 0. But in an error state, for some reason if it's not 1, I'm just going to, if it's greater than or equal to 1, I'm going to assume that it's been pressed and that I'm going to execute a flashing. Then my next thing is I'm going to, I'm going to see if it's a certain color. 63488 is red. So if it's currently red, we're going to change the background color, BCO2, because 2 is when it's pressed. We're going to change it to 65504, which is yellow. I'm also going to change the text in the text box to yellow. If it's not red, which means then it's either yellow or remember initially it'll be green in the BCO2 status, then it's going to go to red. And every second it's just going to go between these two colors. Now in the case that it's not been pressed, because I'm always going to be checking that switch every second, so when I click off of it, I want it to be changed to green and that's 1024. I'm also going to change the text to all clear instead of green just for fun. And then I add a little note in here. I put that note in here because when I was creating the code I put BCO2 in here and you have to remember that when in the case that it's a value of 1 then we're dealing with BCO2 but if it's 0 which is the case for down here then it's just BCO. I'm going to debug it at this point just to make sure that that I didn't paste something wrong or that I got all my notes out. Okay, so what we have is we have one page. This doesn't do anything. After the first second, I'm going to restart it and you'll see that it starts as gray. It starts as gray and then after a second it's determined that this switch is set to zero so it changes this to all clear and it changes the background color to green. Now once I press it, it went to red and yellow. I'm surprised it didn't go to green for a second. We'll try it again. When I press it again, it retained what that BCO level is. Reboot the simulator again. Now I'm going to push it and see if it stays green. And it did. See how it went to the white text? But it stayed green and then it flashed? That's because we have the default level at green. Now we're going to import and export the page. Since I want to keep this button 
and this timer on every page that has this e-stop switch, it's easier for me to just export the page and then just copy it rather than create a new page and add everything. So you go down here and you export the page and I'm just going to call it test. And then you want to import the page. Select the same one. And then we're going to do it again. Okay. And what's interesting is it, it calls it page 00 and page 01. It's still 0, 1, and 2 for the IDs, but it, it does this. And at first I was always setting these back to page 1 and page 2, but I like the fact that it adds that 0. So I know in a larger, in a larger project that these with the additional zeros were duplicated or were imported because sometimes there it doesn't import properly so the first thing you want to do is make sure that the pages the names and the IDs work so on page 0 we're going to change the text on this to page 1 or excuse me page 2 and we're going to change this one to page 3 and then we're going to have it call page 2 which is a which is really one. I'm going to have this one call page two. Now we need to go to these pages so we can get back. You don't want to have a button directly on top of another button because when I would go to page one, this is page two or page one, depending on how you look at it, if I click on it, it'll just come right back. So I want to go ahead and move this one over and we can delete this one. Actually, I think I'm going to move it down here. It's well out of the way. And we'll call it back, but we'll put a 2 after it so we know we're on page 2. And we'll have it go to page 0. Once again, we can delete one of these, drag the other one down, change it to back. Page zero. Do a quick compile. I do have an error. Oh, I capitalized the page. Page. Now we'll run debug just to make sure the page switching is correct. So this should go to page two, and it does. And this should go to page three. Sometimes what happens is you'll click on it and it will just stay that page. Now the code should work on it on the pages. And it flashes back and forth. If I go back though, it's not transmitted back. And if I click here and go to page 3, page 3 doesn't change. Also, this doesn't hold when we go back and forth. So we're going to make page 1 be a global variable because then that will allow it to stay flashing even when we leave and come back to the page. Go to page, the first page, and set the variable to global. And now let's debug it again. Now when I click and start it, if I go to page 3 and I go back, it's still flashing. So now what we want to do is we want it to flash on the other pages. So to go to page 2, all we want to do is when we initially go to the page, and I've been doing that on post initialization instead of pre, just because I know the page is completely loaded. And we just want to set button, this button is named button 0, button 0 dot val equal page 0 dot button 0 dot val. The nice part is, is they're the exact same other than the page 0, so it's easy to remember. And we'll just copy. 
go to the next one. Now we'll debug again. And if we start it and go to page three, it should be flashing. And it is. And if I stop it and go to two, it should say all clear. If you'll notice, every time we go to page one, it says new text because it's a local variable and it has to regenerate every time. The other thing we have is when we get it started and I go here and it's flashing, I can stop it because it only reads it on the initialize. It doesn't continually look back at it. So when I stop it and I go back, it's still flashing here. We need it to stop when we go back. So we'll do that next. You would think we would do it the same on the post initialization, but you wouldn't know what to read. So what we want to do is on the same page one and page two, when we click the button, that's when we want to send the signal to page one. We need to copy this line and put it on page three also. It wouldn't matter if we did it on the press or the release, so now we're going to debug it again. Now it should function where we can start and stop it on any page. Let's go to page 3. Go back to page 1. It's flashing. You'd probably want to speed up the flashing and the timer itself so that it, uh, it, it starts quicker when you flip between pages. Let's go to page 2 where it should still be flashing. And now we can stop it on page 2 go back and it's clear. In this video we went over how to import and export a page which is relatively simple and I showed you a technique if you wanted an e-stop switch on multiple pages how you can accomplish that. Well that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.